Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor and uh, pleasure uh, to be with you in this uh, uh, excellent cooperation. And uh, I hope for uh, future cooperation to be uh, physically um, soon. Thank you very much. Thank you again for the kind invitation and for the honor you give me. And I'm going to talk about women and diabetes. There is an estimated 204 million women living with diabetes. And this number is projected to increase by 2045 to be 300 and 8 million persons, so 50% at least increase. One in three women with diabetes is in the reproductive age, and diabetes is the ninth cause of death in women globally, causing 2.1 million deaths yearly, and one in seven births is affected by gestational diabetes. This is according to the IDF Atlas. Um, so this is the statement of uh, IDF. Diabetes is the ninth leading cause of death in women globally and our right to a healthy future. And for those lovely women celebrating the WDD, people with diabetes can live healthy and fulfilling lives with the pre provi uh, providing them with an interrupted supply of insulin, blood glucose testing equipment when combined with a healthy life. These are the known diabetes complications and for pregnant women with diabetes or at high risk for gestational diabetes, they should manage their glycemic control throughout their pregnancy to avoid long-term complica uh, complications on themselves and on the children. There is a transgenerational effect, higher risk of obesity, higher risk of diabetes, hypertension, and kidney disease to the offspring. Um, one in six live births is affected by hyperglycemia during pregnancy. Uh, diabetes with pregnancy is either a preconception diabetes or gestational diabetes. And these are the two categories of diabetes during pregnancy, either pre-gestational diabetes, which is pregnancy in pre-existing diabetic woman, either type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes, and gestational diabetes, which is diabetes diagnosed to the first time during pregnancy. Let me start with the preconception diabetes and the pre-existing diabetes or preconception diabetes. This is the natu uh, natural history. 60 years ago, 2% of females with diabetes died during pregnancy and 10% of babies were born as stillborn, and 10% of babies died during the first months of life. This is actually um, horrible consequences. But during 1980s, evidence of good preconception diabetes control improved the outcome. Studies in 1990s, if the the conception hemoglobin A1c is above 10%, the congenital malformation rate is 10%. And if the conception hemoglobin A1c less than 7%, the congenital malformation rate is that of the general population. Uh, this is the uh, hemoglobin A1c preconception or at conception and the incidence of congenital malformation, fetal malformation. And as we see, if the, the preconception hemoglobin A1C is high, then the congenital malformation percentage is high. 
So glycemic control preconception is essential. How to manage pregnancy in diabetes? There should be a preconception clinic. And at the preconception clinic, we should insist of preconception hemoglobin A1C less than 7% and to stop all teratogenic medications, especially ACE inhibitors, to stop smoking, to start folic acid 5 milligram uh, three, at three months preconception, uh, to check rubella status and to switch to insulin if on oral agents. Again, we should do a retinal screening and to discuss the potential deterioration in retinopathy and nephropathy during pregnancy with the patient, if the patient is having enough uh, children or not, to discuss the schedule of care in pregnancy and to do albumin creatinine ratio. Um, to encourage ladies to do, this is a prenatal care or um, uh, during conception, to encourage the mother to do SMBG regularly, to adjust the insulin dose in order to maintain um, normal blood glucose levels. And we are going to see uh, how strict blood glucose control during pregnancy should be. This is the Canadian Diabetes. Uh, association, there is need for optimal glycemic control in pregnancy for pre-existing diabetes and insulin therapy should be individualized. Bolus insulin, we may use aspart, insulin aspart or Lispro instead of regular insulin, but using regular insulin is actually uh, okay without complications. And for basal insulin, we may use Ditimer or Glargine as alternative to NBH and to encourage patients to do SMBG pre and post prandially. And these are the targets for glucose values, which are uh, very tight. For fasting, plasma glucose less than 95 milligram, one hour post prandial, less than 140 milligram, and two hours post prandial, less than 120 milligram. These are really um, very tight and uh, difficult to achieve, especially our patients are not using the insulin pumps usually during uh, pregnancy. And for uh, AGA and uh, American Association for Clinical Endocrinology, these are the glycemic targets during pregnancy. And there is a little bit difference between patients with gestational diabetes and patients with pre-existing type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And for the pre-meal, pre-prandial uh, insulin in patients with gestational diabetes, less than 95, while in patients with pre-existing type 1 or type 2, the pre-meal, bedtime, and overnight glucose should be between 60 and 90, 99, which again is very tight and difficult to achieve. For post um, uh blood glucose level or plasma glucose level in patients with gestational diabetes, one hour post-meal less than 140 milligram and two hours post-meal less than 120 milligram. And for patients with pre-existing diabetes, the peak post prandial should be between 100 and 129 milligram per deciliter and for hemoglobin A1C to be equal or less than 6%. These targets are very difficult to achieve, especially in um, absence of use of uh, insulin pump. A hypoglycemia should be discussed and glucagon to be made available, which again, difficult to achieve, with clear instructions on its use and a full retinal assessment should be uh, taken in all women with pre-existing diabetes during the first trimester. Uh, this is the hypoglycemia during pregnancy and the pathophysiology. Uh, may be uh, due to uh, absorption by the baby uh, via the placenta, especially during periods of maternal fasting. 
and the risk factors include history of severe hypoglycemia before pregnancy, impaired hypoglycemia awareness, longer duration of diabetes, hemoglobin A1c less than 6.5, and high daily uh, insulin usage, and iatrogenic hypoglycemia, either administration of larger doses or skipping a meal, or exercising more than usual, and the clinical consequences of hypoglycemia are known with risk of coma, a traffic accident, and uh, death. Severe hypoglycemia can lead to maternal seizures of or hypoxia, and management is to inform the patient about the risk of severe hypoglycemia during early pregnancy and to educate the patient how to prevent and how to uh, do SMBG regularly and regular meal timing and accurate insulin dosage and careful management of exercise problems. Um, how to handle hypoglycemia according to uh, whether severe hypoglycemia and the patient cannot swallow or mild to, mo to moderate hypoglycemia and what to do for each uh, type of hypoglycemia and to repeat checking the SMBG and to detect if less than 60, then we repeat measures to uh, manage hypoglycemia. Um, retinal screening if there is no retinopathy in the first trimester, then to repeat the retinal screening every trimester. And if retinopathy, refer to ophthalmologist. And deteriorating retinopathy may happen due to vasoactive and angiogenic factors. Uh, to do a creatinine and albumin creatinine ratio early in pregnancy and if abnormal, to repeat each trimester. And most deterioration in nephropathy is reversible. And microalbuminuria will double the risk for preeclampsia. This is the prenatal care. All women with diabetes should be referred to uh, first trimester ultrasound and uh, should be affor uh, afforded, offered detailed anomaly ultrasound during uh, the, the second trimester. And of course, a supervision with the obstetrician and to do serial ultrasound during the third trimester and to monitor fetal costs. If delivery is indicated before 34 weeks, then we administer a glucocorticoid to prevent neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. During labor, the timing of labor should be assessed by the obstetrician, but no longer than 40 weeks and usually before 38 weeks of pregnancy to give intravenous dextrose and insulin during labor and delivery and care of the baby to do a blood glucose test every four to six hours before a feed and to diagnose hypoglycemia and should be, um, uh, we should be accompanied with uh, the care of a neonatologist What are the problems uh, during pregnancy? There's difficulty in conceiving with very poor control of pre-existing diabetes and increased incidence of miscarriage, macrosomia and polyhydramnios, obstructed labor, shoulder dystocia, placental insufficiency, Preterm delivery, preeclampsia, increased risk of infections, diabetic ketoacidosis, which is maybe fa fatal to the fetus, and neonatal hypoglycemia. Uh, raised incidence of uh, intrauterine deaths, maybe due to uh, chronic hypoxia, hyperglycemia, or lactic acidosis. Most aim to deliver. 
before 38 to 39 weeks of pregnancy. A few slides about gestational diabetes and gestational diabetes, does it matter or not? These are the uh, fetal complications of gestational diabetes. High birth weight or small for gestational age, macrosomia, hypoglycemia, this mature baby, sometimes respiratory distress syndrome, birth defects, preeclampsia, pre uh, mothers will be diabetic having type 2 diabetes 50% later on, and babies may have childhood obesity and type 2 diabetes later on. Uh, when to screen for gestational diabetes in those with previous gestational diabetes, in those with resistant glycosuria, previous large baby more than four kilograms birth weight, current large baby more than 95th percentile, polyhydramnios, first degree re relative with diabetes, previous unexplained stillbirths, polycystic ovary syndrome, and in those ladies with BMI more than 35 and certain ethnic groups. The postpartum evaluation for gestational diabetes to do six week uh, oral glucose tolerance test to exclude an ongoing uh, diabetes or impaired glucose tolerance. And there is an opportunity to reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes in the future and also to screen for the presence of um, type 2 diabetes in those ladies. Angelina Julie, a famous celebrity, got gestational diabetes and she was receiving insulin, this lovely lady, and thank you very much.